So welcome to our webinar on kidney transplantation. My name is Anjay Rastogi, and this webinar is being presented on behalf of the UCLA Core Kidney Program. And today, I'm, I'm very honored to have two of my colleagues over here. The first is Mr. Mark Coronel and Mr. Brian Gilliam. Uh, today, we'll be going over Mark's journey as a kidney patient. Brian is a living kidney donor. And Brian, when, when did the transplant happen? August of 2017. August 2017. And, and I know your, your beautiful wife, Roxy, is in the audience too. And uh, we would definitely would like to get more of, of what you went through and, and your wife in our next webinar. Uh, but you'll be talking more about a bit kid, our kidney fair that's coming up and also the core kidney program. But before that, I, I, I want to look at Mark, and, and Mark, um, I just have some, some data points on you. Being a physician, we like to go some some data points. So your birthday is July 22nd, 1985. Correct. And and the reason why I mentioned that is when you're 26 years old on your or birthday, July 22nd, 2011, you were diagnosed with kidney disease um, and, and something that we call FSGS, focal segmental. And um, you you made a lot of life changes, fought the disease. And by the way, Mark, uh, by by profession, is a boxer. So now in 2011, he's given the diagnosis of kidney disease, and now he's fighting for his life. And uh, we'll go through that journey how how you went through the the hearing the diagnosis, and also how you fought it. And then you progress to what we call end stage kidney disease. And on August 27th, 2018, you started dialysis. Mm -hmm. And December 10th, 2019, which is uh, about a year and a half after that, you got a kidney transplant, a living kidney donation mm -hmm. from your sister's friend. Correct. So, so this is this is a nutshell what what Mark went through. But Mark, let's go back to 2011 when you got the news and somebody told you that you have kidney problems. So, mm -hmm. so. What was your reaction to that? When I was diagnosed, it was a uh, it was a shocker, because I thought I was going into a uh, um, a clinic where they stated you're very healthy, you can go. So you didn't have any symptoms. I did not. Okay. I did not. Perfect. So I mean, I still had full energy, mm -hmm. but my kidneys were declining, and they do that based on creatinine levels. Very good. Yep. So what happened was my creatinine started to elevate, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they were saying, well, you, have, you might have signs of renal failure. We want to do a biopsy. We did a biopsy several days later, and it was confirmed. I was, I was diagnosed with FSGS, and I started to be more aware of my body. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize prior to that was I started to urinate foam, I, I, and it's called proteinuria. And proteinuria, when you do urinate out, it, it looks like beer on tap so when they when they pour out the beer it's yeah. very very foamy and you're just like maybe it's just my protein shakes that i take i'm also a personal trainer right. so i was intaking protein shakes and i was urinating out thinking it was normal right but this biopsy stated otherwise right. so so mark i, I think I, I do want to stress on a couple of points you said um, number one you said you were asymptomatic you had no symptoms uh, now, if you go to our previous webinars, and they're all posted on UCLA Health and also on YouTube, I go over chronic kidney disease. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the biggest problems we have with chronic kidney disease is asymptomatic. And the only way you'll find out is like you did. You probably went for your routine physical, and they said, wait a second, your, your lab tests look abnormal, and they did, did more. So I think that's, that's actually very important to keep in mind that the way to diagnose kidney disease is, is through a simple blood test and urine test. And right. that's... The other thing that you mentioned about this foaminess of urine, and then you were spilling a lot of protein. Mm -hmm. um, so foaminess and frothiness could be for a lot of reasons, but but one of them is is you're spilling a lot of protein. This also is in our webinar on chronic kidney disease that we did uh, probably six or eight months ago. And the third thing that I want to bring up is I have a question for you. So so you were you know you're a boxer you're in, in bodybuilding. How much protein were you taking? I would take in two scoops, 
maybe 120 milligrams. Grams, yeah, of, 120 grams of protein. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot of protein. I know it is. And, and, and that could also have contributed to worsening of a kidney function. Right. So when we look at, at, at substances that can cause kidney damage, a very high protein diet, and, and provide that you already probably had this disease called FSGS, focal right. segmental, right. then you add protein on top of it. I contributed. It, it contributed to that. So, right. so, so, so actually, that's some very good points from, from, from the way you actually... Uh, now... So what, what, what did you do next? Now you're given the diagnosis, which came as a shocker, obviously. It did. You're healthy, you're a boxer, very active, and now you're, you're being told that, look, you have kidney problems. So for the first couple of months, I had to digest everything. It's just something you, you get emotionally overwhelmed with. Yeah. So I had to go through you know, depression, anxiety. I bargained. I mean, I, I kept going to the doctors. I'm like, are you sure this is really, really going on with me? And, and that's fairly normal for a patient. Um, but I, I knew that, and, and I started to meet with nephrologists, and they said either you get a kidney transplant or you're going to get on dialysis. Those are your options at this point. I said, okay, but how, what is my timeline for that? It can be five years. We just don't know how aggressive this FSGS can be. Right. You know, there's, they can come in. I mean, we've, we, we found the diagnosis now. Or, you know, it can come in 10 years from now. We just don't know. So my lucky number was eight. And the, through the process of those eight years, I still needed to do and keep my mind occupied and not feel sorry for myself. So I started, I, I kept personal training. I, I kept doing what a normal person would do with this on the back of my head. Um, I'm fighting this. I'm fighting this with everything I got, but I still got to keep moving forward. That's just, that, that was just my mentality, is that, is that there was nothing at this point that can stop me. I'm, I'm, I'm going through such a traumatic time in my life, but it took eight years. I think after the first six months, I started to understand my body a little bit more because I started to do, and what's great about these nephrologists is that they keep up with your blood levels, mm -hmm. you know, monthly. And, if, and that's, as a patient, should be your own advocate to do that and to go into the clinic and, and really check your blood levels because then you'll be able to see is your creatine levels going up, how much protein are you, are you, are you expending out? Mm -hmm. And the nephrologist is that they'll be able to tell you what they can monitor as far as your blood pressure medications or all the medications that they put me on mm -hmm. so that I was able to prolong it as mm -hmm. opposed to saying, okay, you're diagnosed today and in six months if I didn't take care of myself, I would have probably been on dialysis okay. then, right. you know? So I, th I think you, you mentioned some of the very key points that once again we stress on. Um, so it took a, a bit of time because it's like you now you got a, a, a big punch, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, and you're trying to recover from that because right. you, you are healthy, uh, you think you're healthy. I uh, thought it was. And, and you're asymptomatic and you've been told now that, and it's interesting, the first thing that comes up is dialysis is a transplant. Right. But you went a step beyond that and that's something that I, I always say, that when you get diagnosed with kidney disease, there are different stages, right? Mm -hmm. and, and some disease will still progress, uh, genetic diseases that you don't have any control over. Right. Um, but you said that how much can I delay it, right? If it does, and sometimes you can stop the progression. Right. But what you did was actually the right thing, that instead of saying that, well, let's get ready for dogs or transplant, you wanted to delay it and you made lifestyle changes. Correct. And probably one of the biggest one was that you started, you know, still focused on your health. Right. Uh, working out. Right. right? Work And working, actually. Right. right. You, 100%. You, you kept a, a job. So I think those, and you also made some changes in your diet and... and uh, so here's the thing. Yeah. What I didn't realize is high blood pressure right. is one of the biggest leading causes of kidney failure. Right. So yeah. I wanted to make sure that my blood pressure was a 120 over 80 consistently, yeah. wow. you know? So that was a big factor for me. I wanted to make sure that if I did work out that my blood pressure was still stabilized at 120 over 80. Yeah. It would go up a little bit when I'd be nervous, but other than it was always stable. Now, working out a lot, and what I started to realize about blood work was that your lactic acid builds up mm -hmm. because the kidney can't generate anything else. So that was one thing that I had to turn down a little bit, mm -hmm. but try to reju like try to do like yoga and, and other avenues of working out, not just constantly weightlifting and punching things all the time, but actually trying to work my body where it doesn't develop so much lactic acid and I get that soreness. Mm -hmm. Make sense? So um, those are the lifestyle changes I did. I was always active, I mean, since I was preteen mm -hmm. to, to even now, to my, my 30s. You, know? you were fighting. Um, I was fighting. I was right. fighting, you know, I was fighting right. competitively yeah. and now I'm fighting for my life, right. you know? The only transition and difference is, is that I wasn't fighting an opponent, I was fighting myself. 
Yeah. You know, so when I look at the mirror, yeah. I was trying to knock that person out, you know, uh, and, and that was a big factor for me, you know, is that is that you are your own enemy right. and you can't let it beat you. And if it does, you get right back up. Right. Amazing. And also the one more thing that you mentioned was that you made sure that you followed up with your doctors on a regular basis. You didn't miss your appointments, even though you were asymptomatic, quote unquote, till the end. At the end, probably you got some symptoms, mm -hmm. but but you didn't miss any appointments, right? And that's very important. You you listened to what what was being told to you. You followed up, went to your appointments, watched your diet, mm -hmm. and you did all the right things. And right. that's what probably going back to 2011, 2018, you know, the seven years that you had right. is probably because all that you did, you know, and you didn't give up, you know, you fought it. So right. I think right. that's very important. Right, right. So now let's talk a bit about the transplant. So, or even before that dialysis, let's talk about dialysis. Uh -huh. So now you've done everything, you've progressed to a point that your doctors are saying, look, you need to be on dialysis, right? Mm -hmm. So how, 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 what was your reaction to that? And, and what did you do when you were told that you should now get on, on hemodialysis or any kind of dialysis? Six months prior to my actual date of dialysis, yeah. my doctor says, look, you're going to need that donor yeah. as soon as possible right. or you're going to get on dialysis. It's right. all a matter of time at this point. Your right. levels are way too high. Yeah. Uh, we've done what we could. Right. Now it's up to you. Do you want to go do a fistula, PD, but for now we're going to do a catheter. And so that's what they did first because I was trying to avoid the fistula yeah. um, because it's, it takes three months to actually heal, right? right. right. So uh, me and my fiance were going to an event and I said, I don't feel good. I have to go back home. And this is how it all started is that when I came back home, I vomited twice mm -hmm. and then I fell down. And at that point, I didn't realize that the toxins in my body had completely taken over, yeah, yeah. right? So the symptoms at that point where I threw up, I passed out, and she wanted to take me to the hospital. But the doctor had constantly told me six months prior till that very date that you're going to get on dialysis soon. So I knew that if I went to the doctor, I was going to get on dialysis no matter what. So sure enough, two days later, it was I got in on a Friday. That Monday, he came in and said, we have to put you on a, a, a catheter. catheter. And you're going to start two weeks after that. Okay. So um, that's how it all happened. you know. Um, and even to that very end, I was trying to fight. I, I was, they, they kept giving me saline right. you know, yeah. because I was so dehydrated, dehydrated. at that point. Yeah. And uh, when they gave me seven bottles of saline, okay, seven of those big containers, I was like, look, doc, I can move. You know, I, I was trying to avoid the situation because I was fearful of the unknown of dialysis. Everything on Google, everything that I read about it, it was just different. You know, my experience was different on dialysis, you right. know. I think that's actually a very good point. And I think you, you, you said some very key points. Number one, that so in our, in our language, in the medical language, we call mm -hmm. that you became uremic. You're, you're having nausea, vomiting, mm -hmm. you almost passed out. Mm -hmm. So those are what we call uremic symptoms. And that's right. obviously is... is an indication to start a patient on dialysis if, right. if they're chronic um, disease, um, and and you started with 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 a uh, with, with a catheter, mm -hmm. you know, and and fistula does take some time, mm -hmm. but looks like you did have have, um, and and we'll talk about your whole journey with with uh, the kidney transplantation, but once again, if if um, there's something with that we call preemptive transplant, you know, mm -hmm. we have made a fair. Um, advancement in kidney transplantation mm -hmm. as well, but if you have a potential living donor, even mm -hmm. before you sometimes you can get on, 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 on get a transplant before and bypass mm -hmm. dialysis completely. Mm -hmm. But for that, mm -hmm. I think the it it takes some time and you it have does. to have a living donor. It does. And um, so, but but I think you 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 got caught on dialysis and uh, you did the best you could. Mm -hmm. And then now you're saying that you know, and we always say for majority of patients kidney transplant is the best option, Correct. you know, and on dialysis, home dialysis, that's mm -hmm. what we push. So if you look at different stages of kidney disease, you know, when somebody comes with early stages, um, like you probably did, and you did the right approach, I don't want to talk about dialysis transplant, I want to delay it, right? Mm -hmm. But when you come to a point that you know dialysis is imminent, then you start looking for living donors. And, and I know today we won't be talking about how you went about look, looking for living donors. That's going to be a different webinar that we'll do. Uh, but I do want to talk, and by the way, today, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. It also happens to be National Organ Donation Day. So if you haven't signed up to be an organ donor, this is probably a good time to do that. So now let's talk about your 
transplant journey. Mm-hmm. And uh, so how, how did you approach, you know, living kidney donation, disease donation, getting on the transplant list? One of the options that the nephrologists do give you is to us get assigned to the transplant team. Right. Um, because in the state of California, me being an O positive, right. there's an eight to 10 year wait for a deceased donor. donor. Yeah. Okay, so that means that I would have to be on dialysis for eight to 10 years, and I would just have to wait for that deceased individual, yeah. and, and that would have to be a match. So they would have to also do the markers, markers. with that. I don't know if you know. But um, I needed to find a way to let my story be known. Right. There was just, I, I had nothing else to lose at that point. Um, when you're on dialysis, you really have, you know, you're fighting for your life at that point. So it's either I raise awareness and have someone in the world listen to my story, be inspired and donate, or, you know, I'm just going to be on dialysis for eight years, yeah. you know? So that was my my, my thing with, with transplant. And it's a full process. It's not young. just, very yeah, young. very young. Right. That's number one. Right. But yeah. number two is both donor and recipient right. to go through the transplant evaluation is right. such a long it's it's a process right. you know they do and they're really good with with transplantation is because they want to make sure that the person donating yeah. is really really healthy because okay. they don't want to make one situation and now make two situations right. worse than it, what you know right. than, than what it is with that yeah. one individual so the the blood work you know I, I remember the first time they told me uh, it went from getting two, two, two blood tubes yeah. to 18, and I'm like, what's going on here, you right. know? Yeah. Oh, well, we have to make sure they do this full blood panel right. to make sure, I mean, they check everything. Right. I mean, they check everything, right. cholesterol, you know, right. anything that comes up. For you, for, as, as a recipient. As, as a recipient. Right. So right. I, I wasn't used to getting 18 tubes done, right. you know? Um, it was only two to check the... the, uh, the, the my uh, creatine levels right. just going to my nephrologist yeah. to going into a transplant center where it was 18 tubes right you know and and that's actually quite significant but kidney patients tend to be anemic right because they have deficiency of a hormone called erythropoietin and right. iron deficiency as well right so now you're saying getting 18 tubes being drawn right so that's that's a bit bit scary right yeah. so i was also anemic yeah. on dialysis, dialysis yeah. you know because uh I don't know the full backstory yeah. to the anemia, yeah. but I started to get anemic yeah. to, right. to, to, to being on dialysis for such a time, you know? Um, so, yeah. So, so that was your recipient. So the first step is when you go through kidney transplant that your doctor refers you to the transplant program. Mm-hmm. They call you, they evaluate the, the recipient. And once they get listed um, for disease donation, then the living donors um, can come in. Correct. So how, how did you... Uh, go about looking for living donors um it was very hard at first okay. for me it, it was it was hard for me it was hard for my family it was right. just hard for us to how do we ask an individual to help right. me out you yeah. know um and my donor now uh, bless her heart she 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 went in to do the evaluation they denied her because she was anemic okay. and then we came to ucla yeah. And it was it was amazing. We were we were ready to go. Oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah. She but was you went like, through a lot of donors, though, right? I, I did. Yeah. I so did go through a lot of donors. Uh, that's all through social media. Okay. Um, social media. We we got on the news. Right. We got on uh, every platform yeah. to raise awareness for what I was going. You were on the through. Fox News. They I was on Fox story. Eleven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with and, and we'll put that in on, on the when we put this on YouTube. We'll put okay. all those links. Okay. So great. People can can watch it. But you told me there were thirty two donors. Right. That came forward. Right, right. And, right. and a good number of them actually were declined. Right. And, and I think we want to make sure, and we have done these living donor meetings as well, in which we have, we have look, and we have one sitting right over here, uh, Mr. Gilliam, but, but this living donor process, and UCLA is a very big uh, program that, for, for living donations, it's very intense. And, and the, right. our whole hope is that, that we identify donors were healthy. And if there's any concern that they are unhealthy, medical reasons, psychosocial reasons, right. maybe it's permanent, maybe it's something you control. But at that time, we will say, look, take a step back. Um, either you fix these problems, if you can, you mm-hmm. know, they might be a bit overweight, they might right. be, blood pressure might be a bit high, sugars might be a bit, or they might have conditions that will, you know, they can't be donors at all, and they right. should be taking care of themselves. Right. So, and I, and this is something that we want to make sure so UCLA is a donor-centric, a living donor program. Mm-hmm. You know, Dr. Dr. Danovich, Dr. Gritch, you know, we have a very big uh, transplant program. 
we want to make sure that the donors are healthy. And, and that's why quite a few get declined mm -hmm. for their own good. Mm -hmm. So your, your donors actually, uh, quite a few of them were, were declined. Right. And, and some of them could be declined for that, you know, just for that time point. Some of them can be declined for forever. So right. it depends upon. And, and this also sometimes is an eye opener because we have found out patients um, that didn't know that they were unhealthy. Right. And then they come for that. Right. So, right. so I think the living donor, and I know we'll be going over that in, in, in a lot more, more, more detail. Okay. But, but, you know, as we are going through Mark's journey, I think this is, this is um, so fascinating, in my opinion, that how you approached kidney disease. You know, this, it, when I give these talks, it's, well, your story is a perfect story. You are young, healthy, and you're given this, this, it could be a, a, a chapter from my book right. in which, and then how you fought that and, and you're mm -hmm. here now mm -hmm. and then you're giving back. So, so you're, you, and I know you're very active in social media. Mark is now actually our ambassador for the core kidney program yes. along with Brian. And, and we are going to, uh, you know, get more involved in, in getting, getting outreach. But, but Brian, you know, hearing Mark's story, and you're coming from the other end, um, your dad was, was on dialysis, Correct, yeah. and, and you were a living donor. Right. And you've been very, very, and when was your? Uh, 2017, of August. August, yeah. so, so about two and a half years. Right. And how, how, how do you feel now? I, mean, I feel great. Everything for me has been fabulous. You know, there's a lot of misconceptions, I think, that, you, you know, things are going to change in your life um, after, after donation. And a lot of people said, oh, you're going to be tired, you're going to have this, you're going to have that, how do you feel? I'm constantly bombarded by that stuff, but really nothing's changed for me, right. you know? Like, you know, my healthy lifestyle is basically the, the thing you have to live. But, you know, energy-wise, everything else-wise, it was, there no complications, nothing, nothing really changed in my life. So there's a big misconception a lot of times that, that all this change is going to happen to you if you go through and do this, and it's not. It's, it's been, it's actually been, it's actually been fabulous for me, so... It's kind of weird to say that, but it has, you know, I get to help my dad, but then, you know, no, no, nothing changed for me, you know. But Brian, you also have given so much back, you know, and we have been working for over two years now. Yep. And and you're, you're just an incredible person. I oh, mean, I, you. I uh, you know, you have to say angels, but, but it's not just the kidney that you gave. You actually got so much involved with uh, the core kidney program, and you're obviously one of the um, first ambassadors for the program. Right. Um, so... Let's talk about the kidney fair. So you've been involved with that, with your family, right. um, supporting it at all levels. So, and we have a kidney fair coming up. Yeah, we do um, May, May, on May 17th, 18th, we have yeah. it coming up this year. Um, yeah. Big thing, my family supported, my family supported me before, yeah. after, you know, during, after, you know, yeah. my, my, my family supported me through the kidney fair, helped, right. helped us with all our stuff we have going on. Yeah. With the kidney fair we have coming up, it's um, August, I'm um, sorry, it's May 17th, and, well, Philip Palmer will be there from yeah. ABC News, from right. ABC TV. He'll be right. there speaking, and yeah. um, it's just a great event to come out to. Uh, you come out and ask questions. Yes. You ask all of his questions, right. and just a, it's a great event to right. come to. And, and the purpose of the Kidney Fair is to give hope, you know, and, and this is hope, this is hope, you know, um, that you, f you fight. And that, that's how we started the Kidney Fair is that, that like, what Mark did that you were given a diagnosis, you didn't accept that, you said, I'm gonna fight it, right? Right. Um, and you fought it, mm -hmm. and you're here, and you're giving back. So that really, you know, in, 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 in that sentence is what the Kidney Fair stands for. Now, Mark, you came to the Kidney Fair last year. This is before, that was May 5th, uh, Senco de Mayo, and that was before your transplant. Right. So what did you think about it? From a patient's perspective, I know Brian is is involved, with, and now you'll be involved as, as in the in the program itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But but as a visitor, as a person who actually was on dialysis, I think at that time, right? Yeah, he was on dialysis. Looking for a kidney transplant. Right. What what right. did you think about the fair? I was always curious about yeah. what these what these what these fairs did, right. and what was really amazing was the community build that you guys have built around supporting each other who have for people who have kidney disease. Um, there were specific booths yeah. that knew exactly what I was going through through my whole process. There was a person who talked about PD. There was a person who talked about phosphorus binder pills, which was. Pretty intense because I, I knew about it, but I didn't know the details of what phosphorus binders did for my body. And that was really great that you guys did offer that because it, it was really a lineup of what I'd be going through through my whole process, process. which is really, really great. I think uh, for people who 
don't have that community, this is the community to go to. Because you guys are informative. You guys are, are saying, look, we're, we're picking you up, you know? And that's what I felt, that, that, that sense of empowerment of I'm not the only one going through this. Yeah. You know, to meet donors. I remember uh, I, I walked in and, and then Brian you interviewed him. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I um, Brian gave me a, a, a magazine yeah. and he said, look, I'm a donor. Yeah. And I was just so fascinated yeah. because I had never met a donor right. prior to that. So I was like, do you They're mind? They're very special. Right, right, they are. So I was like, would you like to get on, on camera with me? I, I'd love to ask you some questions. Yeah. And uh, it, it went from there, and now I'm sitting next to him. <laughs> Amazing. Right. Yeah. So, I'm sitting next to you. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's a to, great team. It's it is, team, it is. Yeah. And I'm very, very thankful that I was able to come here and, and, and meet with you guys yeah. again because now I'm on the other side of the, right. uh, of the yeah. tracks, you know? Now you're uh, part of the team. Right, I'm yeah. part of the team, yeah. correct. So um, it was really amazing. You have all of that, and then you had other other vendors there that were also informative right. um so yeah it was really 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 an amazing yeah. experience and then we did the walk down right. the beach yeah. yeah that was pretty amazing yeah. i was like yes i get to work out i get to show what i can do you know so that was pretty awesome yeah, yeah. and mark this year you, you're going to have your own booth yes uh, at the fair yes and, and you obviously will be speaking and so will be brian mm -hmm. but you'll also be going over talk more about this core exercise that you're talking yes about. so the core kidney program is a UCLA program right but you want to do now the core right of a human being of, um, yes so I had three hours to think on dialysis. I thought a lot. Yeah. So what I was doing while I was in there was meditating yeah. and I was stretching a lot while I was there. So there would, I would have a, my catheter would go in and out with the blood and I would just stretch while I was on my, on my chair. So that's something that I want to emphasize yes. a lot more now this year is, is how do we live a healthy lifestyle on dialysis? Yes. Yeah. Either pre, yeah. during, and post. Yeah. Because uh, one of the things that, that, the doctor told me was to work out, but I didn't know how to. And when I would Google something, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fit me. So now that I'm actually a post-transplant patient that went through all three stages, I know exactly how to work the human body, you know? And, and that's something that I'm gonna be able to bring to the core program is developing stretch programs, yes. you know, uh, developing meditation methods while we're, while we're sitting down. Um, and uh, just getting a healthy lifestyle. So, so let me just uh, get a few things. You know, you you're dropping these nuggets. You know, and and uh, and there's so many. So I'm collect, trying to collect them. Okay. Um, but you said stretching. You know, as opposed to exercise, right? Mm -hmm. Muscle. And I think that's very important for patients with kidney disease because mm -hmm. they have a lot of acid base. You you mentioned about acid, lactic acid building up, electrolyte problems. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of cramps. You right. Know? And and one of the things that I think which is very important for patients on dialysis or even pre dialysis is to stretch, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's as opposed to actually doing some heavy weightlifting, mm -hmm. which they should be doing, you mm -hmm. know, they should be exercising. But I think that's very, very important. Right. You also mentioned meditation. So that's, that's very different from the core, right? Right. This is above the core. Mm -hmm. and, and that, I think, I always say meditation and mindfulness are so important. Because we, we think about your core exercises, you talk about stretching, but what do we do for our mind? What do we do mm -hmm. for our brain? I, I think that's, that's so, and I am a, a very big, and when I said I, my team, and you're a part of the team, and so is Brian, the core kidney program, very, very big on, on meditation and mindfulness. And I think that's so important. And the a final point from this that, that I want to make is, you know, you have different stages of kidney disease. Mm -hmm. You went through all of them, actually. You know, diagnosis, stage three, four, four dialysis, five, right. and then the transplant. Correct. And w when I talk to my patients and when they're getting close to dialysis, I always tell them it's not the fact, just the fact that you're ending up on dialysis. It's also how you end up on dialysis. Mm -hmm. So you took care of yourself. You know, you t you ate well. You took care of phosphorus. You still remember those pills from 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 the fair. Mm -hmm. You went to the fair to get more information. Mm -hmm. You were looking at, and that is so important because it's it's not just that you end up on dialysis. It's how you end up on dialysis. What's your condition? Now I always say in majority of my patients, dialysis is a bridge to transplant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In your case, that, that is actually very true. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay healthy to get the transplant as well. And I think once again, that's something that I can't you know, overemphasize. You have mm -hmm. lived it, mm -hmm. but if you have kidney disease, do what you can to slow down progression. All that Mark did, if I could write, write a book on this, this is the way I would write it, what you did, Mark, that, that you fought it, you, you actually changed your lifestyle, you were 
proactive, mm -hmm. you went and looked for, and we'll talk, have a separate mm -hmm. discussion. So that those are, I think, from, from my perspective mm -hmm. as a kidney doctor, mm -hmm. those are things that I would love my patients to do. Here's the thing too, is that we get our blood drawn monthly or even weekly. Yeah. And those levels yeah. will tell you what to work on. Yes, you that's know, very true. Um, that's my phosphorus very true. was high, so don't eat a banana this right. week or, yeah. or cut out bananas, right. you're eating too potassium, much. Yeah. Your yeah. potassium, yeah. Your, yeah. your magnesium, your anemic, your hemoglobin. So yeah. those are the things, like the hemoglobin we, we, we can't control, yeah. but the other things like phosphorus, right. you know, right. um, the potassium and stuff like that, those are all Acid. eating habits. Yes. You know, those are all eating habits that we do to ourselves. Yeah. And if we can cut it or, or, or just in moderation, they right. say, um, our levels would be good and be opening to, to kidney hey, transplant. You know? Hey, I mean, this is so, so going back to the point, so the frequency of, of, of labs depends upon your stage. You know, stage three, it's less frequent, sometimes even twice a year. Mm -hmm. Stage four gets more frequent. And then you mm -hmm. get on dialysis, mm -hmm. they can become quite frequent. frequent. Then transplant, initial part is quite frequent, and then you get, and, and I think what, what Mark is saying is that it's not just the labs. You, and in dialysis units, most of the time, they give you a copy of the labs. Mm -hmm. The question is, what do you do with those labs? Right. You know, do you just look at them and throw them away? Mm -hmm. You look at them and say, my potassium is high, then throw them away. But you look at your potassium and say, you know what, my potassium is high, I need to do something about mm -hmm. that. And that's what mm -hmm. you did, right? Right. So you you are a you are a active engager rather than a passive person. Right. You looked at the labs and made changes. Right. And I think that's once again, I always say you are your best advocate. Correct. Nobody else could be your advocate. 100%. Because nobody knows your body as, as well as you do. And and most of the time, hyperphosphatemia, hyperkalemia, which is high potassium, high phosphorus, mm -hmm. they're silent diseases. Hypertension, you talk about blood pressure, it's a silent disease. It mm -hmm. doesn't cause any symptoms mm -hmm. till the very end. And I think that's why you have to be proactive. What is my blood pressure? What is my phosphorus? What is my potassium? How can I get a kidney transplant? Mm -hmm. Those are all things. So that's amazing. You know, Mark, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would say, you know, you, you, your story is what, what I would like all my patients to be. And thank you so much. Now you're an ambassador for Core Kidney Program. Thank you. Mark will be at, 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 at the fair, very active, and, and actually will be discussing his exercise. And I do want to mention exercise is not just for kidney patients, but the kidney fair is, is for everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. this is for public. And you will be doing your booth and showing them how to stay an active life, mm -hmm. you know, even if your kidneys are completely normal. Right. So thank you very much, Mark. Uh, Brian, I just want to end up with a few comments from you. If you have, you know, the core kidney program, you also built a circle of core, you know, around the core kidney program. Yeah, no, well, that's, that's a big reason why I got involved is to give back and, and, you know, being in the circle of core, with the group of people we have, um, and the and just the whole organization is just so rewarding. Yeah. You know, I, you guys came to UCLA, you got to save my dad's life, yeah. you got to help me, you know. You have saved so many lives, well, Brian. Still. And, and the kidney might have just gone to your dad, but I think your message is... is, is just just being drug. involved, being an ambassador with yeah. UCLA and the Circle of Core and everything we're doing yeah. is just so rewarding. And yeah. I just I wish I could give all my time to it, but I have a regular job, so yeah. I have to do that. But this, that's how much. So it once we have there. a kidney center at UCLA, then oh. we'll be all working there full time. I'll be in yes. definitely. Yes, yeah. very good. Very good. So Brian and Mark, thank you very very much. Thank you. You know, and we'll be doing another webinar on kidney transplantation and social media. You're very big in social media. We'll put all the links uh, on 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 the the YouTube video. Brian, thank, thank you. you very much. And I know your wife, beautiful wife, is in the audience, Roxy. She drove with you. Say hi to your dad. You. Um, and we'll see everybody on May 17th, Santa Monica Beach. And visit our Core Kidney website as well. So thank you very much. Signing off for now. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.